Hello everyone, this is Student Dave, and I'm going to tell you quickly how I implemented the uh, traveling Santa Claus problem, traveling Santa, uh, in my last video where I just kind of showed the globe and uh, the shortest path Santa would take to deliver all the presents around the globe to each country. Uh, here's Santa, he's got a little hat, he's got a body, a beard, he's got some... He's got the bag. He's kind of heavy. Um, anyways, uh, so I impl implemented what's called a genetic algorithm, a GE, a GA, <laughs> a genetic algorithm to uh, find the shortest path he would take if he started at the North Pole and went to each country around the planet. Um, and so, I mean, it's definitely not the exact solution. It's an approximation. I don't have a very good computer. But uh, I'm going to show you how you can implement such a genetic algorithm, like what are the basic principles of it, and then I'll give you this code I wrote to do it, and then not just the code of how to do it, but the code like to render the globe, and to make the little Santa Claus that follows it, and to light up all the cities, and all those little nuances. I mean, it's a pretty messy code, at the, to be honest, but uh, I'll put it on the website so you guys can play around with it and maybe make your own or make one that's better than mine. Okay? Great. So what is a genetic algorithm? Well, like any other algorithm, it is a collection of commands and rules to complete some particular task, right? In this case, the genetic algorithm is used to search a very large space of possible solutions to get an approximation of some exact solution. So it won't get the exact solution usually, but the idea is that the space of possible solutions is so large that it doesn't make sense to try to search the whole space. And so what this is, is this kind of like a strategy for searching that space in a slight potentially optimal way, but basically in this uh, educated way, using information about the performance of each possible solution. And so in that, it borrows greatly from the ideas of genetics and, and uh, evolution in biological systems. And so in order to understand this better, let's see how biological systems use, uh, use uh, these kind of optimal solutions to search the space of possible species. Well, in nature, or in biology, um, what you have is you have, for example, a lot of little bugs. You got all these little guys. And they're not all the same. They're all a little bit different. They're not completely different. You know, they all kind of look similar. But here they got kind of different colors. And so this kind of makes up what a species is. And this is one particular generation. And what happens is that these species will, these little bugs will compete with each other. They'll compete with others. They'll eat and try not to be eaten. And um, due to all the different factors that affect their fitness and their survival, this generation will, some will die, some will survive, some will reproduce, some won't. And so the next generation won't, will, while maybe similar to this, won't be exactly like this. It'll be a little bit different. For example, we may have a many, you know, the little red bugs may disappear. Maybe they were too obvious, they stood out too much. Or maybe the environment used to have a lot of red in it. It was in Arizona, and now it's in the, it's really green now. And so all these green bugs now uh, are have better camouflage. And so what happens is, the old principle is it, of it is that while your population is similar, they're not all completely different, they've, they're have they varied. They're varied in their, their phenotype and the way they look, and that affects their fitness. So some are more fit than others for a particular environment, and so the ones that aren't get removed, and the ones that are stay, reproduce, recombine, make new species um, similar to theirs. And the idea is that what happens is you're going to kind of hone in on this uh, very uh, effective survival uh, uh, characteristics. Like an uh, eagle has very good characteristics for flying and for spotting bugs and things like that. And so the idea is that through selection, through this form of natural selection, um, you can have a large population and have it whittled down, whittled down towards getting to a optimal form or an optimal solution to a particular problem or to a particular environment. And so that's what gen genetic algorithms are all about. They're all about using a large population of potential solutions, or large populations of different bugs, to then apply to a particular environment, to apply to a particular problem, see how good they do, get some fitness value for each one, pick the ones that are good, then have them recombine, because you don't want to just use the same population, you got to vary them a little bit, and then from that, you get closer and closer and closer to some ideal solution. Now, while this is rarely going to get you to the exact solutions, it's a very good way for getting approximately to the correct solutions. So in the case of the traveling Santa Claus, or the traveling salesman, as it's formally put usually, is you're trying to find the shortest route through a collection of points, or a collection of cities, or a collection of countries. And while it might sound like a kind of simple problem, it's not really obvious, and here's why. Say, for example, I start here, 
and I go, well, I could go here first, and then I can go here, go here, 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 and then maybe back here or like over here. And that's not a very efficient path. You could already see that just from looking at it. A more efficient path might maybe go, you know, around this perimeter like this and then do that. So while you can see that intuitively in this example, figuring out if you had a large number of cities, it's not very obvious. Sometimes it seems like going to the one right next to you is the optimal, but it all depends on later on where you have to go next. And so this is called what's this is uh, called an NP uh, complete problem. NP complete. Um, and all that means is that while there is an exact solution out there for it, in order to find the path, the best path here, you can't just figure it out very quickly. There's no uh, real quick closed form solution. You just got to solve it by trial and error. Just try out a bunch of different options. And there's no uh, deterministic time in which you're going to solve the problem. That is, you have no idea if you're going to solve it today or next year or next millennia or in the next universe. You don't know. And that's what an incomplete problem is called. And that's what this problem is. That's the reason it's so popular is because it kind of uses the benchmark to compare a lot of uh, training algorithms. So while we can't search the entire space of possible paths, so there's a bunch of possible paths and we can't search the full space, what we can do is we could kind of uh, start to approximate it using genetic algorithms. So let's say, for example, we have a path, like say this is A, B, C, D, so on and so forth, and we pick some path like B, C, D, A, E, or whatever, right? This is one potential path. So this is considered like one organism. Then I could create another one, like C, A, D, B, E, right? And that's another organism or another path. And I could create an entire population of organisms or paths, and then I could see, well, how long, what is the distance it takes to travel? Like basically, if I follow this route, how long does it take me to go to every city? If I do this route, how long does it take me to go to every city? That is the fitness of each of these organisms or routes, just like an animal has a fitness and how well it performs in nature. And so depending on how well these do, we'll select out ones that do well and we'll get rid of ones that don't do well. Like this one did well and this one did not. Then what we'll do is we'll take ones like this one and the next one and recombine them or just mutate this one by like say switching these two letters here, the A and D. The idea is that you have this population of successful ones, so you think, hey, they did a good job, but you're not sure if that's you know, exactly the best you can do. So what you'll do is you'll recombine them, you'll switch them around, and then run it again, and run it again, and run it again, to see if you get better and better and better results. Now, there's, there's a thing I should tell you about this idea of local minimum, and there's a reason why this doesn't always get you to the correct solution. Think of what we're trying to do in this uh, traveling Santa problem or any problem where you're trying to find a solution and you don't have any idea what it is and there's many, many parameters to it. Think of it as this. You have this fit fitness you're trying to reach and you want to be way low. I mean, you want to, well, in this case, you know, low values for fitness is good performance. You have a very short route and you want to get as low as you can. And But you have no idea how low or how fit or how, um, how fast or how short your route can be. You have no idea. And that's the whole problem of all these systems is that the solution is very, the, the ideal solution is very hard to find and there's a lot, there may be a lot of contours and shape to all the possible solutions, the possible fitnesses you can have. So imagine this function is kind of representing our situation. And so let's say we, particular, we pick a particular set of routes, like a, a family of routes that happen to land right here. This is like a family of routes, and in general, they're all kind of this fit. Then we recombine them and have the next generation, and maybe we end up over here. And then maybe over up here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and start to stay around there. And if we plot out the way that looks, it looks something like this, where this is, by, this is the generations, and this is our fitness. And we might think, oh, well, look, we're doing good, and we've asymptoted, so hey, we probably find the ideal solution. But the reality is we got stuck in what's called a local minimum. That's what this is. And if we were able to get out of this little situation, we might have been able to find a better fitness and maybe an even better fitness over here. And so this is the whole problem of what people call ex uh, exploration versus exploitation. Is that when you exploit and further explore something you're doing well at, I mean, we were getting better and better and better, so why not you know, look down that route, maybe just try to vary within that and get better and better and better in that domain. But then there's also this issue of exploring, trying to get outside of where you've looked, even though you're doing well, to see if there's better alternatives. 
And this is a problem faced not just by these algorithms and finding optimal solutions, but it's by us, it's by organisms, it's by many things. I mean, imagine you're playing, you're playing uh, slot machines in Vegas, and you're winning like $10 an hour on this one slot. And you're like, oh, okay, I'm happy, I'm doing really good. But then, you know, you're thinking, you saw somebody win on another slot, like $10,000. And so you're thinking, well, I'm winning okay here, but maybe, maybe I'll make more money if I, if I go to that other slot machine. But then again, maybe you'll lose more money. Or imagine you're like a squirrel and you're trying to get food and you go to this one tree all the time. And you, you get a lot of food, you know, it seems sufficient. But maybe at this other tree, there's tons of food and maybe like Snickers bars and stuff. Who knows, right? And so the, everything, our brains, these algorithms, computers, animals, everything is dealing with this issue of exploiting what we already know and what we're getting better at and exploring novelty, exploring new things. So the whole idea of these genetic algorithms is to kind of have this balance of where you recombine within successful species to get more and more successful, but you also throw in these recombinations and these mutations to help to hopefully bounce you out of these local minima if you so happens to start to get be, be getting stuck in one of them. So again, it's this balance of exploration versus exploitation and and this is fundamental not just to the genetic algorithm, but any solutions to these NP complete problems, these problems where there isn't a deterministic closed form solution that you can just quickly get. You know, you have no idea how long it will take for a lot of these problems. And there's a lot of problems in nature like this. And so this is one solution for this genetic algorithm. There's many other ones. And what I'll do next is I'll, um, I'm going to put online the code I used to implement the, the uh, genetic algorithm for searching for Santa's optimal path. Um, it's not super pretty, but it does implement a lot of features, not just genetic algorithm, but also how to create a globe and all these little uh, nuances for plotting cool stuff on an image. Um, yeah, I'll put that up, and hopefully you guys could grab it and, and make your own, maybe make a little bit better ones or more interesting ones. All right, thanks. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot. Um, let me just show you right now on the uh, another video where I do this implementation on the uh, on the uh, Santa problem, and so you can see the evolution of the paths. It's just a projection in 2D, so you can show it in MATLAB, um, but it'll show you the evolution of the path, which is kind of cool looking. And but you'll be able to implement that your own in the MATLAB code, which I'll be posting online shortly. Okay. So at the top, you can see the performance over time, over generations. Uh, basically, that's the fitness, so the distance is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. The bottom is a more interesting one. The green is each city. It's a 2D projection of the longitude latitude, so it's going to look a little bit funny. But the important thing is to see is how like the web starts to clean up quite a bit and how it cleans up a lot in the beginning, and then it kind of just becomes a little bit of tweaking as it goes. Okay? Uh, all right. Uh, you can try out the code. I'll post it on my website in a minute. All right. See you guys.